The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Kara Oosterhuis with realagriculture.com here for our latest episode of our Canola School series. Today I have with me Dr. Hector Carcamo, who is a research entomologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Hector is here to tell us about some of the interesting research he has done. Hector, what can you tell me about flea beetles? And flea beetles is, is one of the more serious pests, uh, especially this year, uh, compared to other years perhaps. Uh, I should point out that uh, if you are growing canola in, in more central and northern areas of the province, you have a different composition in terms of species of flea beetles. In southern Alberta, in the past we had, you could say 99.9% of the flea beetles were, were the crucifer, the black flea beetle, and you would only find one out of a thousand would be the striped flea beetle. That situation has changed now. We have probably 15, perhaps even more, 20% of the flea beetles are now this tri-flea beetle, which used to be mostly found in more northern areas, in more humid areas. So that makes a difference in terms of sitting day recommendations, uh, because the tri-flea beetle happens to be a little bit earlier in its seasonal activity. So it comes out of the winter in sites a little bit earlier than the crucifer flea beetle. So that means that we actually have potentially some risk of flea beetle damage in uh, fields that are planted also early. So that's an important consideration to take in mind. So across the province, do you see more of the striped or the crucifer uh, flea beetle? It depends where you are. In, uh, in southern Alberta, we still see more of the crucifer flea beetle, but it also depends what time of the year you sample. Uh, but we are seeing now certainly that the proportion of flea beetles has increased quite, quite uh, dramatically. So we like I said, we, one out of a thousand flea beetles would have been striped 20 years ago. Now you find more like 15 to 20 percent of the flea beetles are, are striped. And the other important consideration is that the striped flea beetle is not as vulnerable to the uh, seed treatment insecticides that are used currently. So this species is not controlled as well by the, uh, the uh, neonicotinoid insecticides. So there is potentially a need to use foliar sprays. And one message that we, we can tell growers from the previous study that we conducted a few years ago is that the threshold appears to be correct. You know, so far we had this 25% of cotyledon damage uh, and that was a nominal threshold. Now we have confirmed that it, it seems to be correct. And now we are doing another study to, to uh, study the interaction of seeding rates or plant densities and the use of the foliar chemistry to, uh, to manage the flea beetles. So how, um, how beneficial is it to use a foliar, especially with looking at what could be happening with neonics? That's a good question. And, uh, and I can tell you that our research so far suggests that uh, the foliar insecticides do not seem to to manage the flea beetles as, as well as the neonicotinoid insecticides. But I should point out that our data is still somewhat preliminary. We are, there is a lot of variability in, in our data when we, when we do these studies. Uh, and we have studies in Beaver Lodge, uh, in, in Saskatoon, and also in southern Manitoba, and in southern Alberta and near Lethbridge. And we see a lot of variability. But, uh, Sometimes we see, uh, we see a bit of a, an increase in the yield or protection of the yield by using the foliar insecticides. Uh, most of the times it doesn't seem to be as good in terms of uh, protecting the yields compared to the, the seed treatment. So there's certainly uh, a bit of work to do there. So do you think we're getting ahead of... Um, so because we're seeing flea beetle damage so bad, do you think our seed treatments, like, do you think they're not good enough? Are we getting ahead of where they are? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think the, it's, it's been well known that the, the seed treatment, the seed treatments control flea beetles up to a point. And if you, because the flea beetles do not, the, uh, this neonicotinoid insecticides, they will not kill all of the flea beetles and also the flea beetles they need to for the insecticide to work the flea beetles have to feed on the plant right so if you have very large number of flea beetles taking a small amount of, uh, of the plant then you are going to see some damage so it, I, uh, I don't think there is a case 
of these flea beetles developing resistance with insecticides and the insecticides no longer being effective on, on the flea beetles. Uh, I suspect that some years, depending on multitude of factors, including most likely weather factors, you'd have to look at a, a long-term series to see how flea beetles are reacting to different weather conditions to, to know why some years you have more flea beetles. And also uh, effects of natural enemies are important. We know all insects, they will have predators and parasitoids feeding on them. And the weather also impacts these beneficial insects. And also the insecticides also impact the beneficial insects. So all those factors would accumulate and determine whether you have high numbers or low numbers of flea beetles. And overwintering conditions are also very important. And we don't know a lot about how winter conditions affect flea beetles, but there's so many factors, it's difficult to, point, to pinpoint one in particular and say, this is why we have large flea beetle numbers. Uh, all of this, including you know, what farmers do in terms of agronomic practices, when they seed, uh, how far apart they seed, what plant densities they, they, uh, they use, uh, what chemicals they use, and what they have done in the past in the fields. Uh, the landscape around the areas also can be an important factor, and this is something we are interested in. So what are, some, what are the main beneficials that actually attack the flea beetles? This is a really good question. In, in fact, uh, we have started to collect uh, insects in farmers' fields, and we want to collect them alive, and uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we have started this, this study this year. Uh, we collect the, a lot of spiders, uh, and we think that spiders are important because there was a recent paper published out of uh, Sweden where they showed that these wolf spiders, these big hairy spiders that everybody's scared about, <laughs> they, they actually seem to eat a lot of flea beetles in, in, uh, in Swedish agricultural systems. And we noticed that if you look around for the potential predators running around canola fields, you see a lot of spiders, but you also see these, uh, these small black beetles sometimes uh, that are kind of flat. Some of them are small, some are, are almost half an inch long. So there's a lot of variability. They're called carabi beetles or ground beetles. We haven't done enough work to actually link which species of natural enemies are the most dominant. It'd be important to have that information because then farmers could start taking into account the potential role of beneficial insects and predators before spraying. So you could say, okay, I have 20% cotyledon damage, but I see there are two spiders in, in every square meter. So I'm not going to spray because I expect those spiders to eat some of the flea beetles, so I, I uh, shouldn't have uh, as much damage. But we're not quite there yet to provide that kind of recommendation, but hopefully in the future we can get there. Uh, we use the sticky cards to, to give us an idea of what species you have. And, and as I mentioned before, it's an important consideration because this striped flea beetle has a different biology in terms of the activity during the year, and also it's, it's not affected by the neonicotinoid insecticide as much. So if somebody wanted to know whether you have this trifle beetle, uh, you could use these yellow sticky cars. Uh, you just have to uh, put them uh, about one inch above the ground in the, in the field. And you can even put it outside the field by the edge. That's where the flea beetles are more, more abundant. Uh, you probably would have to, to replace it every week during the sealing period if, if you, you like to get a more complete estimation of the populations and communities of species of flea beetles in that area.